Let's step back to 2015 and take a look at this red Orion 5000 watt HCCA amplifier. classic red Orion HCCA amplifiers go way back to the mid-1980s and have always been known as beastly amps. Today we're going to take a look at a 5000.1D HCCA. This is a first generation one from around 2015. I actually had this amp a while back, tested it with my cat bank, and most recently retested it with my lithium bank LTO. So that's what you'll see today. First off, let's look at the amplifier and see what it's all about. Here on one end of the amplifier, see the power and protect LEDs. You will see RCA ins and outs, Tiffany style, of course. Also see the gain control, a subsonic switch. It is not variable subsonic, but it is variable bass boost from 0 to 18 dB. We also have a low pass filter, a phase control from 0 to 180. We have a mode switch, takes us from master to slave. And it has a data link connection via a phone connection. And then we have the remote base gain on the end, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack. On the opposite side, we have power connections as well as speaker connections. The power are double two alt, as well as the way they're stacked together. The two grounds are together. The two positives are together. Thank you, Orion. Then we have four gauge for the speaker output. You may also notice that the end caps are slightly different in color. And also notice the way that the writing is black. The contrast is bad. It's really hard to see the text in the sample. As far as measurements, 21.3 for the length, 11.7 for the width, and 2.8 for the height. Millimeter equivalents are there as well. As for ratings, at 1 ohm, 14.4 volts is rated 7,180 watts RMS at 0.5% THD. Which is kind of odd because on the amp it says 10,000 watts. And then we look closer at the manual, it gives us CEA ratings which says 1,900 at 4 ohms and 4,000 RMS at 1 ohm. So not really sure what's up with the ratings here. If you watch further in the video, we will show the guts of the amp, the internals, so stick around for that. But first up, as usual, we'll put the amp on the SMD, the More Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to test the power output. On the left, you'll see the RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage will also show the remote clamp indicator so that we can see the efficiency. This here's my favorite part. At 4 ohms, the amp shows 2200 watts at 14.4 according to the manual. So here we go. We should have plenty of voltage. We are using the lithium bank. And we get 2161 at 14.91. So statistically right there at the power, even though our voltage is half a volt or so higher than 14.4. Uncertified up to clipping. And let's see what we get. Easily surpass the 2200 here. 2467 at 14.83. Now let's set it for the dynamic burst. Again, we're in the high 14s, actually into 15 volts here. 2375 at 15.13. We measured efficiency to be 68%, which is a little bit low for a class D amplifier. It is what it is. Let's move on to the two ohm test. Rated 4120 at 14.4 volts. First up is a certified test. 1% THD is what we show. It's rated at, at half a percent. We got a little less. 3713 at 14.72. So let's try the uncertified. See if we can get that 4120. Counting up. Not quite there. 3901 at 14.68. Dynamically, 2 ohms, 40 hertz, high 14s for the voltage, didn't quite bust 4,000, 39.75 at 14.85. As far as efficiency goes, got a little bit better, 72% efficient. Now let's move on to the 1 ohm test. 7180 is what it's rated in the manual at 14.4. So it's like they're underrating the 5K to be about a 7,000 watt amp. We got 5291 at 14.52. That's certified, 1% distortion. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. See what we get here. 
Again, we still have pretty strong voltage. 57.11 at 14.32. What about dynamically? Can we get that 71.80 dynamically? Oh, it's definitely counting up. Oh, there you go. Ooh, it surpassed it. 75.05 at 14.97. They were at the high 14s to get that. As far as efficiency, we did drop a little bit more. 64% efficient at one ohm. As far as results, we did get the 5,000 watts, the sample fire shows, but not the 7180 unless you go to burst mode at one ohm. CA ratings again is 4,000 watts at one ohm, so we easily surpassed that. Now let's try it with the massive audio subwoofer and watch it flex. Let's try a little 808 Dreams Basitronics. see by the video here we're getting plenty of excursion a little over a thousand watts before the sub maxed out but yeah it um pushed this sub literally to its maximum so uh, let's try one more song here though and see what it sounds like let's try the woofer test i think we're right on the verge of over excurting this woofer but let's try it If you listen closely, you might hear some of the very close to bottoming out of the sub. Um, but yeah, again, the amplifier pushed it to its extreme and um, it sounds great with music too, which I didn't really show here, but it does. Now let's take the bottom panel off of this amp and check out the internals. Take off the screws here, eight different screws holding it in and then we'll pry the bottom panel off and see what we have. Do the flyover. You can see the transformers there, four different transformers. 16 2200 microfarad for the input filtering we also have eight 1500 microfarad 200 volt caps for the rails as well as a fan in the center there to keep everything nice and cool inductors on the other end crossovers outputs all that good stuff and there you have it this the internals of the orion hcca 5000.1 version one let's move on to the p's and c's the pros and cons first up it is a big amp. I don't know why that's a pro, but it is big. Tiffany RCAs for the inputs and outputs. Does have a remote base control, even though it's on a 3.5 millimeter jack. Dual two alt inputs, which gives you plenty of size there for your power and ground wires. It is linkable if you want to strap up multiples of these because you need more power. Things could be better. It does have plastic end caps, which I really didn't show. Has writing on the amp, which is hard to read because of the lack of contrast. 3.5 millimeter base connection, subsonic switch instead of being variable, single speaker output instead of multiple. The ratings for two ohms and one ohms in the manual seem a little high uh, according to what we received on the test. And this is a 2015 model, so do know that they did improve this over the years until recently the 5000.1D SPLX. I'll leave links in the video description if you want to see other Orion recent models that I've tested and also older school models if you want to check some of the old ones. If you like these videos, I really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm push my videos. And yeah, if you like these type videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. Thanks as always for watching. And if you like to support me, you can check out patreon.com slash old school stereo. If not, just be ready. Next video is coming soon. Big D, I'm out of here. Thanks for sticking around to after the credits. Let's do an additional test. 0.8 ohms mono. This amp says do not run it under one ohm. That means that we're going to test it at 8 at 0.8 ohms. Certified, we got 5492, so right at 5500 watts, right at 14.44 volts. That's certified 1% distortion. Let's try it uncertified up to clipping. And wow, look at this. 6223 watts at 14.24 
What about dynamically? Let's see what we get. Set the uh, pulse track here on the amp dyno disc, sending the 40 hertz tone into the amp, and yeah, boy, over 8,000 climbing up. We can get 8,500. It's going to stop. 8442, 14.66. Time for me to go get some more amps. I'm out. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of <laughs> I don't wanna be a slave, I've been doing shit my way. Uh,